Hi guys, it's John from Android Addicts, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Easy SMX M10 gaming controller. So this is the latest mobile controller from Easy SMX, and it's in a similar vein to the Razer Kishi controller in the design, but the price is quite a bit different. So this starts at just £42, which is about $50, and for that you're getting quite a lot more than you get in the Kishi in this nice small package. So let's just have a quick look at the box. We'll get inside and see how it looks and how it fares and plays. And then we can hopefully make a decision as to whether this is the right controller for you. Here are the details on the back of the box. So you can see if we just zoom in here, we can have a quick look at the details on the back of the box. And you can see here, this supports devices up to 175 millimeters wide. Now you will need to take your case off the phone, but still it will at least support those large phones as we're gonna find out shortly. Now you can see here, this currently says it's designed for iOS. That's just the packaging at the moment. This is the Android version. Like I say, you can get Android and iPhone versions. So other than that, the box is quite simple, but when you get inside, let's have a look at what we get. Okay, so inside the box, we are greeted with the controller itself. You can see here, nothing too fancy, just simple and straightforward. And underneath here, we do get a manual and a little warranty card here. We'll have a look at that shortly. So this is the controller itself and it is very light. That's the first thing you'll notice. This thing weighs just a few grams and this is really not gonna be causing any problem when you're gaming for any sort of fatigue at all. This is light to the touch indeed, but it is still ergonomic. You can see here the back of the controller, it is slightly curved here, so it's nice to hold. You do get that nice grip on the back as well. Let's just go over the buttons on the front and we can see what we have on the M10 here. So as I said before, this is a standard Xbox layout. So you have your A, B, X and Y. Some good feedback for them. Maybe not as clicky as I prefer. I do like the clickier buttons, but they do feel quite nice and they do give good feedback when pressed in. We have our Xbox layout analog sticks as well and they do have the clickable buttons. We have our D-pad here. And again, maybe not quite as clicky as I'd like compared to an Xbox controller, but it does feel good when you move it. It doesn't feel like it's spongy particularly. So that's good to hear and good to feel as well. We also get our select button here and our start button. And these do give some good clicky feedback there. Now also on the front here, we have a couple of different buttons on the left. We have a turbo button here, which we'll go through setting up shortly. We have our Android screenshot button. We have our home button and we have our program button. This will all become evident when we look at the top of the device here. We can see we have our usual L1 and R1 bumper buttons here. And again, you can probably hear that. Some good feedback there on those. They feel really nice to use. We do have analog triggers and there's a fair bit of play here. It's not as big as an Xbox controller, but you do get like, some good various positions here that you can set or that you can use at least for your analog sticks. So that's good to see that they are analog and not digital. And we also see at the top here, we get an M1 and an M2 button. So these buttons here are programmable. And again, we'll go through all of that as we go through the video. Other than that, it opens up, it is an expanding controller and we do have a USB-C connector here, which does indeed move up and down so you can easily get your phone in and out. On the bottom, we do have a USB-C port. This is for charging. And we also have down here, we have our little sections that are cut open here to allow the sound from your phone to come through. So if you've got rear facing or rear firing speakers, then when you pop your phone in, the sound will come up through the gaps here and will allow you to hear without it being muffled. So that's good to see. And we have our status lights here, which again, we will go through shortly. Okay, so I'm gonna pop in my S23 Ultra here, and it is literally just a case of popping it in, and we are now set up and ready to go. So like I said, because this is so light, it really doesn't add any weight to your phone particularly at all. You can see here as well, it's got clearance for the cameras, it's not touching the cameras here you can see a gap going over there so cameras are fine on my s23 ultra and again the back is also not touching so none of your phone will touch the back so there's no worrying about scrapes at all so that's good to see so let's just go through the gamepad tester and we'll see how this fares now you can see here, as this is a usb-c you're going to get instant feedback 
on your buttons and controls, so there's no lag at all. Bluetooth nowadays is pretty lag-free, to be honest, but having that USB-C does give you that extra fuzzy feeling inside that you're not gonna have any lag whatsoever. Now, I've been playing around with these and I haven't found any areas where I can't get to, so there doesn't seem to be any dead areas in the analog sticks, which is good to see. And again, we can test the buttons here. And they're all responding nicely. We have our bumper buttons and our triggers as well. And you can see here, the amount of pressure is variable on the analog triggers here. So yeah, everything functions brilliantly and it feels nice and smooth to control. Like I say, having the USB-C connection is just is better than Bluetooth. You can't ever argue against that, apart from the fact obviously you do need to take your phone out of the case. And I will just quickly show you the manual here, just so you can get an idea. And we'll just go through the English pages. If you want to pause and read about anything, then you can do. I'll leave enough time for you to do so. But obviously this is just showing you the layout of the device. We then have our details about charging your phone and the turbo mode settings. So again, pause if you need to read any of this but that is the English instructions there. So what we'll do first is we'll go through the turbo mode settings here. It's quite simple to do. So to start something in turbo mode, as you can see at the moment, my A button is just normal. What you do is you press the turbo button to hold it and then press the button that you want to be turbo and then you let go. So you can see now my A button is now turbo. None of the other buttons are if I hold them down. Now if I press and hold and press A again, you can see this is now toggling turbo on and off, so I'm not pressing anything now. I can turn it off or turn it back on, and that keeps the turbo mode running in the second mode. If I press and hold again, press A, that turns it off completely and we go back to normal. So again, let's just do that again. So press and hold turbo, we'll go for X this time, and X will now be turbo enabled. We can press and hold and press B, and now B is also turbo enabled. And now if we press and hold and press B again, that's going to be constant, while X is only whilst we're holding it down and we can toggle B on and off. Now don't forget to go back to a normal, just press and hold turbo and press the button to make sure you've gone past each mode. And there we are, we are back to normal. So that is the turbo button function and that's really nice. That's quite rare to see nowadays on controllers. So it's good to see that one there. So let's go over the program function now. And again, this is the button in the bottom right here. And that allows you to configure the M1 button here or the M2 button here to function as one of your other buttons. So if you prefer pressing up here for A or something else you need to be able to access quickly, what you can do is press and hold the program button here. So let's press and hold. Hold it for three seconds. You'll see the LED start flashing here. Now you're going to press whichever programmable button you want. We'll start with M1. And now we want M1 to be, let's say, the B button. Once you're finished, you press the program button again, and that saves that in config. So now if I press M1, we should see the B button light up. It takes one press to get going, and there we are. We are now pressing that on the B button. So let's say I want the M2 button to be my left bumper here. So we'll press and hold program again. Three seconds, it starts flashing. We'll then press M2. Press it once so we know we're gonna be programming M2. And now we're going to press, in fact, let's do something else. Let's do right on the D-pad here. So we pressed right, we now press the program button again to save that and now after I press it once, it will now be active. Then when I press M2, we are doing right on the D-pad. So you can set it to pretty much all of the clickable buttons here. So that's quite a handy little feature there for programming. There is another programming mode as well that we're gonna look at, and that is setting up macros. So let's say you've got a game which need, you need to press a certain number of buttons at a certain time for. What you need to do is set up a macro so you don't have to keep pressing them individually and manually each time. So again, we're gonna hold down the program button here for three seconds. It's gonna start flashing. We'll then press our programmable button. So we'll do M2 again here. And now we can put in a macro of different buttons we want to press. Let's say we're gonna do Y, X, A. Okay, 
And we press the program button again, and that should save. And now when we press our M2 button here, you can see it does the macro we just did. So that has saved that macro in the button. Okay, so let's program another macro for our M1 button. So what we're gonna do is press and hold the program button again for three seconds. I'm gonna press M1. Okay, so now our macro, let's say we're gonna do LB, RB, A, B, Y, Y. Okay, and again, just completely random, but we'll then press the program button to save that. Press M1, and then we should see it repeat those actions we just did. So that is the macro function. And that again, is really useful to be able to set up these features on this controller. Okay, so that's all very good and well, having the controller and getting it set up, but how to actually play during gameplay. Let's go into Xbox Game Pass now, with a bit of remote console play here, and we'll see how we get on. Okay, so as you can see here, apart from my streaming quality not being 100% brilliant, the controller's working absolutely fine here playing Starfield via Xbox Remote Play. The mayor's all right. Always paying too rosy a All buttons are functioning as they would on the Xbox. So really nice for Remote Play. And of course, it supports all of the other Remote Play applications that are out at the moment. Obviously, rest in peace Stadia, but Steam and GeForce Now Apple Arcade, Game Pass, and Amazon Luna. So you shouldn't have any problems at all with compatibility. And you can hear also that the sound is coming through the speaker grill here quite nicely. It's not being obstructed at all. What we'll do whilst this is loading up is just plug in the charger and we'll just see to make sure that my phone starts charging okay. And you can see here, the phone is now charging. We have a little status light here of it charging up. So that's working absolutely fine. Screenshot button as well, let's just give that a go. And that is working no problem. Now there's no software mapping on this controller. So if you do wanna map your controls, you can check my other video, which I've got in the top right or in the description to use something called Mantis Gamepad. And any games that don't support the controller out of the box on Android, you can just map the controls easily enough with Mantis Gamepad Pro. So yeah, here we are, you can see absolutely no problems whatsoever with our controller. What we'll do is go into an Android game now and we'll just make sure that we can get some functionality in a native Android game. Okay, so here we are in Fortnite and we can see here, this is working absolutely fine. No problems. Like I said, if there are any games that don't support controller that you need to map your software for, then go for something like Mantis Gamepad Pro, which I've linked down below. As you can see, I don't play Fortnite. It's uh, working absolutely fine though. Oh. This guy is really after me. Okay, and I'm gone. So yeah, works absolutely fine. You need to be a decent player, of course, to get the most out of it. That is the Easy SMX M10 controller. Really like it, mainly the lightness of it is really something different compared to, say, the game set or the Kishi, which is slightly heavier. You do really get a better feeling with this in comparison to those other controllers. So yeah, I have put a link down below to this controller if you wanna check it out. Be sure to ask any questions if you have any about this controller. Happy to help where I can. And yeah, thanks again for watching. Thanks again to EZSMX for sending this out to me. And I will see you again in the next video.